I was sort of planning on doing this tomorrow anyway I thought better get on and get it done so we've got to make a mould for the flywheel and after my change of plans I've just mentioned we've uh, it shouldn't take very long actually but what I'm doing I'm actually engineering in wood because I haven't got a metal lathe otherwise I'd have made a metal one and I was a bit uh, concerned that after burning my bench with the wood so quickly, I thought, well, it's got to be such a mess, you know, it's got to take an awful lot of cleaning up. So I've had an idea that may or may not work. So what I've done, I thought, well, if I just get a very sloppy cement mix and paint it on here when it's finished, it might just save it for the couple of minutes it takes to cool. So what I'm going to do is just see if I can show you, if it's, a, if it's a bit long I might obviously cut bits out, I don't like whizzy video to be honest. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to turn that, I've got to match it on that piece. I've already uh, just cut the corners off and done that because people, I don't want to scare you, people seem to think they're scared doing it, so it's are safe. And that new phase plate I did seemed to hold it a lot better. So we're about set up and ready to start. So the first thing to do is to find the centre, which is easy. Put a line and go there. Like that. That'll show you the centre. Then we need another line, and this, if you can see, is. Well, it's five inches, almost exactly, but I can show you I can get it even better. So, we need a line two and three eighths from the middle, which is there. Because we come out from there. Just less than five, which is fine. Then we need another line, and that is just less than four, so it wants to be three and a half. Oh, no, hang on, I want to be bigger. Nearly made a mistake there, four inches, right? So it wants to be. Two inches from the centre. There we are. There. That's it. So now we've got the line and where to start. And I'm going to double check it. I've got a. If you can see that. One of these digital readout. Well, that was good stuff. I must say, battery was flat. Luckily, I've got some in stock. So now we can show you properly. There we are. It's in inches, right? So, what you do, you go down to the bottom and press zero, like that. Right? Down to zero, that's it. Now, I'll do it in your view. If we slide that open like this, as I say, remember we're supposed to be engineering, aren't we? Change it to inches. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, if we were on a lathe, it would be. So, just to show you. See, it's five inches and eight thousand. That's not bad, is it, for a measurement with a ruler? So what I'm going to try and do is uh, I've sharpened my chisels up. Instead of tool, let's see. Yeah, it was ready. Right. You know. 
the first time I ever did a bit of softwood and you would think that it would be easier than hardwood but it isn't it it doesn't go very well at all so we'll just see what that says Oops. There we are, we're well inside, right? So that's all right. So we just need to take some out from there. And I'll just measure that quickly and just see what we've got and what we're supposed to have. Um, it's a lot bigger so we can go a little bit smaller with that so it's difficult to show you this and I'm not even sure you'll be able to see it but you might because this camera as you know hasn't got any depth of field at all and you just might be able to oh, if I hold it right way up it's 3.9 Right, so we're not, that bit doesn't matter, but I'll put the outside doors. So we'll just take a, we'll have to just keep going a bit. That'll do lovely. Yeah, that'll do lovely, that's about there. So now, I have to get the outside measurement a little bit closer to where we are, which you do like that, and there's a little bit to go. So I'm just going to take that out a bit and then I'm going to start going down on the depth. made it any better for you but I've had to move the light because I was in my own shadow I couldn't really see what I was doing but there we are that depth is the same you just have to trust me on that as near as yeah as near as it needs to be because it's totally irrelevant that is so now we have to get the outside the same as that one It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it would be handy if it was nearly the same. I will just show you what it is at the moment, 4.9. And that one is 5.09. Right? So it just needs a little bit out there. I'm going to lathe it, metal lathe, it's a lot easier than doing it by hand on here. It doesn't have to be exact as I say, but it could be a bit nearer than that. Right, I've now got to do the same with the hole in the middle. Although this, it's not quite so critical as the outside, because of course it, it doesn't meet, it's just the two stubs on the side. So all I've got to do is go nearly all the way through with a hole in the middle. And there's a big knot to cause the problem. So we'll see how we go. And then I can find out the exact position we want to be. Oh, that is funny enough. That's <laughs> that's exactly right. That is on the outside. So all I've got to do now is square it up and go through. That nut's blown out there. That doesn't matter because if you can see that. 
One thing I'm taking to off here, the other thing is it will leave just a little lump on that which can be trimmed off later. So that's not serious to me. What I do is put that on there just to measure it to see how deep we want it. And this, as I say, isn't critical at all. And difficult to see, for me to see, I can't show you. It's, it's about 3 sixteenths, anyway. So we just face that off down to about 3 sixteenths, which is quite simple to do. And I did sharpen that before, I hope it does it, and I can finish it with this scraper. So there's the two halves of the mould. So they just go together like that obviously. I'll line them up as best I can. And all I've got to do is put, is it called a throat? I don't know. Anyway, it's a hole to let it in. And I do know it wants to be quite large. Right? About that. It wants to be, oh, nearly a quarter of it I think. Not a third, but yeah, nearly, nearly a quarter. And the reason for that is when it to cools it contracts now because of no size that's not a not an issue when you make a pattern you actually which you put in sand cast in sand you actually have to make it larger to account for shrinkage but as I'm not into any sizes that doesn't matter of course all we're after is getting a working ingot more or less so I've just got to cut a as I say cut a piece out which is I won't bore you but showing you that because it's literally just two saw cuts and chop that bit out you know so I'll do that little bit and then all I'm going to do is screw them together and I've got to get the middle as accurately as possible so I might I might just make a, a ring or something to do that I'm not sure and then drill an air hole in the ends because otherwise when the aluminium goes in there it's going to create an air bubble isn't it and that so that will help it, so just drill a hole in the middle of those. So that I'm going to do that. And then to finish it, I've got something else I'm going to do because you see how quickly this um, aluminium burnt this blooming wood on this bench. I mean, look, it was instant, wasn't it? I moved it straight, it was nearly instant. And I knew it would burn it when I did it, but I've got an idea that might work. It might make it work in the end, because I wasn't very hopeful. I was thinking it was going to be such a mess it was hardly worth bothering with. But because I said I would do it, I would. Anyway, this might and might not work. So I'll show you that bit when I get the rest of it done. Well, I've got that done, look. One bit broke out, but that doesn't matter as I say. This is just a hole that you pour it in and hopefully it's big enough where the shrinkage takes place at the top. You know, we'll have to see. And um, you can't really see inside, but it gives you the general idea of what it'll look like, doesn't it? If you can just see down there. Anyway, I've just screwed it, these two together so you can take it apart. Now, as you know, as I've been saying, if I pour hot aluminium on that wood, it's going to burn it straight away. And it's got to last for about a minute, so it's going to be pretty rough anyway. I'm just going to try something, which may or may not work. And that is, 
some of that cement that I line the furnace with. Well, if I mix a very runny cement mix, like thick water, but not very thick, and give that a coat on there, obviously they come apart. Uh, these screws, I've got to get some, I like to put some uh, washers or some nuts on as washers just to nip it because I didn't have any a little bit shorter. Well, I didn't find any a little bit shorter, I should say I've got some, but I should have. I thought that would be all right. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. So that's it made. And what do you think of my idea then of lining it with a bit of cement? Will it protect it for the couple of minutes it needs? Um, for the alley to cool down. We can only wait and see, can't we? Anyway, that's it done. So I don't think it's too bad, actually. If you, if you can just, oh, I can't get close, can I? If you can just see in there, those they do match. You know, it's it's not going to be too bad. Well, I did this last night, and it does stand a chance of working. It's now dried. So, we will see what happens, but uh, yeah, it's, um, I think we now stand a slight chance of it working, but it's still a slight chance. Anyway, as I say, time will tell.